Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Unprecedented numbers of people are voting by mail this year, but can you trust the mail-in system? We're putting the Postal Service to the test. The results of our 10 News investigation coming up. Plus, comparing COVID-19. The guidelines that we're following in Virginia, they work. And when we don't follow those guidelines, we have outbreaks like you saw in Washington. The three things the governor says Virginia leaders did that the White House failed to follow. Well, it has been a day of chaos for state leaders and departments. A cut fiber in the Richmond area shut down several websites, including the one to register to vote, and today is the final day to do so. The system is now back up, but people are calling for the deadline to be extended. Roanoke's director of elections says there's a chance the deadline will be extended because something similar happened back in 2016. I feel very relieved, you know, the, the online portal should be back open and we're open for business for voting, so those are all good things. And you still have until midnight to register to vote online. With Election Day just three weeks away, an unprecedented number of people are voting by mail. As of Friday, more than a million Virginians have requested an absentee ballot. But how is the U.S. Postal Service handling that huge influx amidst its own cuts? And a 10 News investigation reporter Jessica Jewell is working for you to make sure your vote is counted. Casting your vote in 2020 has more people ditching the ballot box for the mailbox than ever before. That's pushing the limits of the U.S. Postal Service and forcing voters to decide whether they trust it. I don't know. It just it's a little kind of frightening. So I'm like, will it get there? Hello. I really don't worry about it because the mail is what it is. You know, it'll get there sooner or later. It was better off knowing to get my ballot in and knowing I have it safely sent than it getting discarded or something else. We support the post office 100% Absolutely. and the letter carriers. They're doing a great job, but they can only do as much as they can do. Google, in partnership with 10 News, surveyed more than 500 people across Virginia to get a feel for your concerns. More than half said they are concerned about the Postal Service handling mail-in voting. On specific concerns, 34% said delayed delivery, 31% election or voter suppression, and 24% lost mail. It's not as quick as it used to be, especially since they moved the processing center to Greensboro from Roanoke. And they told me that it was mailed the 26th of September. I didn't get it until the 2nd of October. That was quite a long time. With your votes on the line, 10 News set up our own experiment to put the Postal Service to the test. The goal, simulating the mail-in election process to track the timeliness of arrivals. We sent six mock ballots from each of these six locations over a two-week period. Participants in Allegheny County, Bedford County, Roanoke County, Roanoke City, Montgomery County, and Lexington put the letters in drop boxes addressed to themselves and tracked how long it took to get back to them. Here's what we found. All 36 letters made it to their destination. One arrived the next day, 20 arrived in two days, nine arrived in three days, four arrived in four days, and two arrived in five days. Looking at the slowest letters, three of the four-day deliveries happened in Lexington, one in Christiansburg. The five-day deliveries happened in Roanoke County and Roanoke City. The results don't sound too problematic, but they do show there's a chance your ballot could be thrown out. In Virginia, mail-in ballots will be counted as long as they're postmarked by election day and arrive by noon that Friday. If we applied those rules to our experiment, six of those 36 mock ballots would not be counted. The Postal Service would not answer our questions about delivery timing or issues. Instead, we were given a statement saying additional resources would be in place starting October 1st to ensure election mail reaches its intended destination in a timely manner. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy saying the U.S. Postal Service's number one priority between now and the November election is the secure on-time delivery of the nation's election mail. They should feel confident. Roanoke City Registrar Andrew Cochran tells us the Postal Service is working with his team daily, responding to any concerns they may have. He says a lot of voters, 10,500 so far to be exact, feel confident enough to receive their ballot in the mail, but most think it's too risky 
need to mail the results back in, opting to return their ballots in person instead. That way they have every confidence they've seen their ballot collected there. A process the officials promise you can trust, but some voters aren't giving their stamp of approval just yet. Didn't trust it, you know, because they were having so many issues. I wanted to make sure that I'm here and my vote is counted for. The best advice from election officials, if you are mailing your ballot this year, get it in the mail early. And new this year in Virginia, you can track exactly where your ballot is online. We have a link for you to find that mail-in voting applications and all the important deadlines you need to know on WSLS.com. In Roanoke, I'm Jessica Jewell, 10 News, working for you. Elsewhere in his first briefing since coming down with coronavirus, Governor Ralph Northam took aim at the White House today. He says he came out of quarantine and he was back in the office as of yesterday. The uh, governor and first lady had 65 close contacts to trace for possible exposure. He says none of them tested positive and he credits that to strict guidelines like social distancing and wearing masks. Northam compared it to the Rose Garden event, which led to multiple people testing positive. A gathering where people cavalierly sat together, stood together, hugged each other. You saw it just like I saw it. No mask, no social distancing. And look at the number of people that tested positive. That, you know, we talk about science. It doesn't get any clearer than that. And the governor was also the target of a kidnapping plot. The group who was planning to kidnap the Michigan governor also discussed the same for Northam. During today's news conference, the governor emphasized that he and the first lady are safe. The number of people being hospitalized for COVID-19 is going up. That's according to the Roanoke Allegheny Health Districts. The Department of Health says 50 people are being treated in hospitals in the region. Officials at Lewis Gale Medical Center and Carilion Roanoke Memorial Hospital say right now capacity is not an issue. VDH leaders say they're seeing some races disproportionately impacted by this. I can tell you that 23 percent of all of our admissions have been African-Americans and 15% of our hospitalizations overall have been Hispanics. So for hospitalizations, there is a disparity um, in both of those groups compared to their um, representation in our community. The hospital says it's prepared if capacity does become an issue. A special visit from a top U.S. leader. Secretary Mike Pompeo's advice when dealing with disagreements. And you are looking at a live picture from our Virginia Tech sky cam overlooking Blacksburg. Look at this sky, not a cloud out there, lots of blue skies. I'll let you know how long we'll see the sunshine before clouds and rain return coming up in your local weather authority forecast.
Liberty University students received a special visit from the State Department today. Secretary Mike Pompeo joined members of the LU debate team for a live stream discussion focused on alliances. That topic coincides with the team's theme for this year, dealing with Japan, the Republic of Korea, NATO, and the Philippines. Secretary Pompeo said that he tries to treat every counterpart with respect. I have not found a single alliance structure that is a 100% every day working solely for the benefit of the United States of America. The very reason one enters into partnerships, alliances, agreements is because there is a solution that is cumulatively better for all of the members. He also said even in deep disagreements, we should do our best to listen, understand and appreciate concerns while doing what's best for the country. Ah, a difficult decision for a local favorite. We were just faced with a choice and we, we had to do it. The message the owners of the home place have for their customers. I mean, he could probably make a 60 if you could, if they could keep the line down, he could probably make a It is. Check two, level two, test two, three, four, and my dog fish. Check, check, check. News package weathered me. Thank you, sir. A heartbreaking announcement from a place that's become a family favorite. Yeah, the home place announced it's closing for the rest of the year. 10 News reporter Lindsay Kennett shows us the dilemma that's ahead. Phones are ringing off the hook at the home place restaurant in Catawba. But after this Sunday and 38 years in business, there won't be anyone picking up. The family-run restaurant made the tough call to close for the rest of the year, making the announcement on Facebook Monday night. Again, we don't take it lightly. General Manager Kevin Wingate says when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, small businesses across the country took a huge hit, and the home place was no exception. Business is down about 50 percent. 
With the current social distancing and health restrictions in place, he says the restaurant just can't afford to stay open. Well, it's very disappointing because my dad, he started the business and, uh, you know, we, we hate to have to have to do this right now, but uh, at this time, we just don't have any other choice. Wingate says this isn't goodbye for good. They're hoping they can reopen during the spring of 2021. Maybe when the restrictions are lifted and we can get our restaurant back at a better capacity. To all their loyal customers. If we ever get open, you know, again in the future, which we hope to, if it's possible, that they'll come back and patronize us again. In Catawba, Lindsay Kennett, 10 News, working for you. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. High pressure, our fair weather friend is bringing us just that this afternoon, brought us sunshine. It's going to stay with us here for two more days. So if you are unable to enjoy today, you've got Wednesday and Thursday that are looking quite pretty as well. Future tracker showing tonight being fair as we head into Wednesday. This is 7 a.m. We're going to be seeing a lot of sunshine. Bright blue skies will still be with us here as we head into uh, it looks like Wednesday afternoon. As we now head into Wednesday night, we are looking at skies fair and then on Thursday, we should see a day where we start out with a lot of sunshine, but as we head into Thursday afternoon, it would not at all surprise me if we start to see a little more cloud cover rolling in. Uh, so we may turn partly sunny in some locations by say two, three o'clock Thursday afternoon. Attention sky watchers, you'll be able to spot the International Space Station Wednesday morning from 701 through 707 for about six minutes or so. Keep in mind sunrise is at 727, so it should be dark enough where you should see the International Space Station if you want to. It's going to be a fast a non-blinking thing flying across the sky. In addition to that, the moon, or, or pardon me, Mars rather, is at opposition with the Earth, meaning that the Earth is going to be right in between Mars and the sun here as we head into tonight. What does that mean? That means that Mars is going to be brighter in the sky. It's going to have a more vivid red color in the sky for us here tonight. I will also tell you that it's not going to be this bright in our sky again at opposition until 2035. So again, there will be a nice planet in the sky for you to see. It's going to be bright. It's going to be red. Enjoy. Tonight we are looking at lows falling into the 40s, but right now we stand at 55 in Hot Springs, 61 in Withville, also into Hillsville and Galax, 69 in Roanoke, also into Martinsville. The upper air pattern is such that we're going to stay warm here through Thursday. And then the jet stream takes a big old dip to the south as we head into Friday. That means that not only we're going to have a cold front swinging through here on Friday, but this jet stream is going to grab the chilly air that's in Canada and bring it in our direction. So the high temperature for the 24 hour period we call Friday might be reached at midnight, say Thursday night, and then temperatures probably won't get that warm again throughout the day on Friday. And we're looking at highs this weekend only in the upper 50s and lower 60s for the most part, and that could lead to us having some frost around as we head into Saturday morning and also on Sunday morning. I don't think it's going to be terribly widespread, but patch frost certainly possible for us as we head into Friday night and Saturday night. So something to bear in mind for tonight. Skies are clear. We're becoming chilly overnight lows anywhere between roughly 40 and 47. 48 hours zone by zone forecast showing mostly sunny skies in the NRV Wednesday may turn partly sunny later on Thursday. Pretty much the same story for the highlands over the next couple of days. South side, you're going to hit the mid to upper 70s here Wednesday and Thursday for Lynchburg. Your warmest day will probably be Thursday where we could hit 76 to 70. 78 degrees. Then you're in the middle 60s Friday, upper 50s on Saturday, lower 60s on Sunday before temperatures rebound early next week. For Roanoke, you're pretty here through Thursday. Could have some scattered showers, maybe even a couple of storms on Friday, drying out Saturday and Sunday with another chance for rain headed our way next Tuesday. App. All right, Jeff, the City of Angels wants to celebrate, but as my dad used to tell me, hold your horses, young fella. And the Eagles, while well, they're swooping in from Chestnut Hill to Blacksburg, will break down the matchup. Sports is next.
Oh. All right, the Lakers took to social media to tell their rabid fans that the public party to honor their latest NBA title is on hold because of the pandemic, stating they all agree that a joyful and inclusive celebration will take place as soon as it's safe to do so. The Lakers, of course, took down the heat in a six-game finale in the bubble down at Disney college football now three and one Boston College comes a calling at two and one Virginia Tech. It's an 8 p.m. start Saturday night. Our own Brooke Leonard breaks down this quality ACC collision. According to Hendon Hooker, his dynamic compared to his roommate Khalil Herbert is a little underwhelming. Well, he's like dynamite and um, I'm more of pop rocks. A modest answer from the quarterback predicted to start on Saturday against a Boston College team who is surely looking to stop the duo. From what I've seen on tape is that they, they, they play extremely hard. Um, they swarm to the ball and, you know, they're, they're really strong and, and firm up front. But Herbert knows exactly what to look for from the Eagles. So just seeing that and being able to study and uh, we kind of work off each other uh, with calls and different things. So. Just being able to identify that, identify the different looks from the corners and the safeties, different blitz, uh, just some things we pick up and work on and um, kind of just work off each other. Boston College is second in the conference in passing, averaging 295 yards a game, a challenge Emmanuel Belmar is looking forward to. Um, we definitely want to pass, rush, um, rush the passer, but, you know, going off of last week, what we gave up, you know, they might come out running the ball, so we got to be, be prepared for both. And the Eagles quarterback is best described by head coach Justin Fuente as someone they've all seen before. He seems to me to be a, a big, strong kid. Like I've seen several blitzers bounce off of him. Um, you know, kind of a Ben Roethlisberger type, you know, a guy that's, that's so big and strong that sometimes those guys have a hard time getting him down. The next challenge awaits Saturday at Lane Stadium. In Blacksburg, I'm Brooke Leonard, 10 Sports. All right, thanks, Brooke. Fans, honest to goodness, fans saw their first Major League Baseball action of the season last night. Dodgers and Braves game one NLCS 11,500 tickets were allotted at Globe Life Field in Arlington. About 75% appeared to be adhering to the mask rule unless actively eating or drinking. The fans are back at the ballpark this evening. Braves and Dodgers are underway in game two and a quick check and we will see that the game is scoreless in the first Tampa Bay and Houston later on this evening. Rays leading that series 2-0 and I mentioned Clayton Kershaw has been scratched as the starter for Los Angeles with back issues. They've got a rookie starter making his first postseason start ever. News and notes for you. Week five of the NFL season completes tonight with the Bills at the Titans. The University of Florida putting football on pause amid five positive tests. Now, LSU scheduled to come to Gainesville this weekend. And, of course, they've got contact tracing to do to see if they'll be able to field a team. Jets are shopping around Le'Veon Bell. You need to pick up around $6 million of that 2020 salary, perhaps throwing an entree like chicken and dumplings and you're good to get Le'Veon Bell. Lindsey Ward is in the money for that one. All right, three little awards. One big highlight. Cut it out. Last night, Braves, Dodgers, Ozzie Albies with the home run, but the closer in the bullpen makes the catch without moving. That is Mark Melanson. And Mark watched it come right in and made the catch. And we'll have to mm -hmm. take your word for it. Thank you, Happy Night of the News. Coming up next. We'll see you at 7.